Hello again everyone. One of the issues as cars become classics, or just less common, is the difficulty in finding certain parts for them, especially where you have modern cars with parts made from plastic that are specific to just one model. What I'm going to show you today is how hobbyist level equipment that's easily available to anyone can allow you to overcome this kind of situation without resorting to using an alternative component from a different car or modifying your car out of necessity. When servicing the Avanzato, one of the things I wasn't able to do was change the air filter. Not that I didn't want to, the thing is frankly horrible, and definitely overdue for replacement. The problem is that they simply aren't available, at least here in the UK. The precise filter I need carries the Hatsu part number 17801-87216, and it's a plastic frame type with a 140 by 140 millimeter square shape, which doesn't match up to anything at all that I can find out there for me to buy. For a basic essential of car servicing, that's a problem. There are, if you can hunt one down, aftermarket panel filters, like this one I found from Japanese company Blitz. Unfortunately, this will cost me about £50 to get hold of, and I probably have to have it imported. So that seems a trifle excessive, as does trying to get one sent over from Japan or Malaysia. Now, I'll be honest here, I do have contacts available to me who I could ask to go to the local parts store in Japan or wherever, and they'd probably be able to find me one of these filters on the shelf and post it over. But that's still going to take a bit of extra time and cost more money. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to demonstrate how you can make your own parts in these kind of situations. First up, I'm going to need a donor filter to give me the filtration material I need. So I went on the internet and I found this. I think it's from a mid-90s Toyota Corolla. Why did I buy this one? Well. It's the same basic type as the Dahatsu filter, it's physically big enough to be sure I'll be able to get what I need out of it, and it cost me a whole £2.60 delivered to my door. As you can see though, it's a completely different size and shape to the original item, so this is where the work starts. We gotta find a way to make this fit into the hole for this. With my high-end premium air filter in hand, I immediately set to it with a Dremel and a cut-off disc to separate the outer housing, then removed it by cutting through the very edge of the filter material. The material is actually moulded into the plastic, so this is the only way to get it all off. This left me with the core of the filter, which is what I'll be making use of. Next, I needed to sort out what I was going to try and replicate, so I took some careful measurements of the standard filter and the layout of the material in the donor filter then modelled myself a suitable frame to let me put the latter into the former and for this I used Autodesk Fusion 360. This is a very useful piece of software and it's completely free if you're a hobbyist or a startup with a low turnover. With the component then split up into parts suitable for manufacture and assembly, I turned these into STL files, which I then dropped into Cura to generate the program code to actually make them. Now it was time to fire up the 3D printer and let it do its job to print out the components I needed while I got on with some other tasks. So here you see my component parts for the main body. This would have easily printed in one piece on the printer, but I did it in two parts to avoid some of the issues you can get with printing overhanging features like this flange. On the inside you can see the grooves that are designed to hold the folds of the filtration material in the same way they would when moulded into the plastic on a production item. Because it's in two parts, I need to glue it together, for which I'm using just normal cyanoacrylate type super glue. It doesn't take too long to set, so I just used some clopegs for a few minutes to hold it aligned while I did this. With this now together, I want to fit the filtration material into it. First up, again, I use glue in the grooves to make sure it'll all be sealed together, and then I take the core, which I've trimmed exactly to fit the internal dimensions of my housing, and it just slides home with a good firm push. To make sure the material is secure and sealed into the housing, I then use these comb-like pieces that I printed, 
to mate into the grooves from the underneath. Again, glued and pushed home, sandwiching the filtration material firmly in place in the right alignment. Back on the top of the filter, the very ends of the material get glued to the housing to prevent a gap that could let dirt or dust through. And in addition to these, clamps are securing the ends of the material from underneath, just like the comb-like parts that did the sides. All that's left to do now is use some of this gel type super glue to eliminate the very slight potential gap in each corner and where the centre plastic section of my core meets my printed outer frame. And there you have it, the main body of the filter is now completely finished. One final piece that's needed is this rubber seal that seats around the filter in the airbox and prevents anything making its way past that area. A simple solution would be to just take the seal off the old filter but it's very easy to cut the donor filter's larger seal, trim the parts to suit, and then glue them together. The seal fits to the lip around the filter, and there you have it, a near perfect replica of the impossible to source original filter, all ready to be put in the airbox and let the car breathe more easily. This video has been interesting and helpful to you and demonstrated how you can make use of things like 3D printing to overcome issues of obsolete or unavailable components on more modern cars. Something that's already a bit of an issue and will become more so as these cars become older and more obscure. Please check in with me next time and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe below.